we go. Please open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. And I just want to give you a little encouragement here. A nice old gentleman of 75, he got a good report from his doctor after his examination. And the doctor said, how have you kept in such good shape? Remember, he's 75. Well, sir, he said, when I got married about 50 years ago, my wife and I made an agreement that if I lost my temper, she would stay silent. And if she lost her temper, I would leave the house and go for a stroll. I credit my good health to the well-known advantages of walking. <laughs> I thought that was cute. And I want to talk about anger today because... According to uh, the forum guys, I'm not even going to mention their names because you get shadow banned, I guess, if you even mention some of these names anymore. But they said we need to prepare for an angrier world. And why is that? Because people have lost their jobs. And I could go on and on. Higher prices, supply shortages, fear of sickness, a loss of our liberties, free speech, etc. It makes people upset. And as we live in these end times as Bible, the Bible is just coming so alive, isn't it? Of all the things he said were going to happen. It's like, really, we have to live in this time. Yeah. <laughs> because now we're seeing changes that we've never even thought we'd see. But we have to prepare for ourselves. We can't control how other people respond, but we have to learn to get self-control. Yeah. Because if we're not careful, we can accept an angry invitation every hour almost. The news, the neighbors, it doesn't matter what, we go to the grocery store, people are upset and angry. And it is, it's an angrier world. So we have to learn how to control ourselves. And this is a lot about how do we respond to all this anger and how do we deal with it ourselves? In Ephesians 4 verse 22, it says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. I want to say, there's so much of how we used to live and talk. And now in Christ, we're supposed to be walking a different way. And we have to renew our minds and we have to think about the words that we're saying. It says, put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. So the, the old man of you before you got born again had a way of talking. And now it's corrupt. That was corrupt according to its deceitful lusts. But now we are to be renewed in the spirit of our mind that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, every man speak truth with his neighbor. That would be huge. If people would just be honest, uh, a lot of people, and we're going to go into two different types of people, but if they would just be honest and share how they really felt and what they needed, a lot of problems would go away. But people either attack each other or they stuff it and they suppress it and there's no true honesty amongst a lot of people now we said speak truth with your neighbor for we're members of one another in verse 26 be angry and sin not first of all anger is a signal that something's wrong it's not a solution doesn't mean that just because you're angry you should respond this way so now we have to grow spiritually we have to learn how to walk in the spirit because our flesh wants to dominate as the end times roll in and we start seeing all these bad things that are happening we have to keep ourselves in check with the Lord and our mouth in check with the Lord right so it's there, I used to think it was wrong for a Christian to be mad to be angry uh, anger is an emotion that God's given us it's like a, a red light that goes on in your engine there's something wrong there's something wrong but we have to learn how to manage our anger, how to control it, how to uh, communicate properly. And many times people are angry because they came from angry families. My dad, as an example, was um, two people. When he was not drinking, he was the nicest guy. Everybody loved him. But when he would drink, he was pretty mean to his family. And as a result of that, and, and I shared a, with you a lot about my dad being a World War II uh, Normandy survivor, and that would, that what he saw, I can't even imagine. 
no, no counseling and all that. But as a result, my two brothers both have told me individually they had to deal with anger because they responded the way our dad did. And if you get married, that doesn't work so good. <laughs> People don't, uh, wives don't like that kind of treatment. So they both had to learn how, relearn how to respond. Because when you're in an angry family, you respond kind of the same way. It's like you just always go for that. You, I'm going to bully through. I'm going to get my way. And if I'm loud and I mean I'm in control and I'm going to bully through, and then you be quiet. Well, that's not the way to communicate. That is causing people to walk on eggshells. It says, be angry and sin not. So there's a way of being angry. It, it's not wrong to be angry. I used to think it's just so wrong to be angry. So I would suppress all my emotions because I was in ministry now for what, 48 years, I think? A long time. And I just thought, well, you can't be angry. You can't be, and trust me, church people are some of the meanest people I've ever met in my life. But I was trained and thought you just can't, you know, let your emotions, you can't ever be upset. You can't, well, that's not healthy. That's not healthy. So you, you have to find a balance in life of where you came from and spiritually where we want to go and how to deal with our emotions properly and yet acknowledge that someone has hurt me. Someone has just crossed my boundaries. How do I respond correctly, right? Jesus got angry. He took that whip and boy, he went through that temple, didn't he? That means, but he didn't sin. But, and that's the thing, be angry and sin not. Because when we get angry and we sin, we open up the door to the devil. So that's what it says, verse 27, neither give place to the devil. In verse 29, let no corrupt communicate. This is the main thing. The communication that comes out of our mouth when we're angry can be very, very corrupt. And what happens is it grieves, in verse 20, uh, 30, it grieves the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gets grieved by our words. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. And I just want to ask everyone to judge them themselves. Am I edifying to be around? Do people like being around me or am I always mad? Am I always angry? Am I always upset? Am I always upset with something? Uh, we're supposed to be edifying. That means people want to call you. They want to talk to you. They want to be with you because you're ministering grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Verse 31. This, this whole little chapter here is just packed. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now that malice there means you desire to cause harm for someone. You can say something and twist it to a point where you get other people mad at the person you're offended with. That's malice. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So remember, we're following the Lord in this angry world that we're living in. And we have to control our emotions. We have to learn how to monitor ourselves so we just don't clam up or we don't blow up. Now, if you put a D in front of anger, you've got danger. And when you're angry, a lot of evil can happen. Words are spoken that you can never get back. Uh, things that you say and do, and this, a lot of this was a habit that came from families. Again, I'll, I'll look at families and I'll see the same behaviors. Unless people get born again and they break that habit because we're supposed to renew our minds and we're supposed to start changing the way we think and when we start changing the way we think, we'll start changing the way we speak. So what kind of communication comes out of you? Garbage in, garbage out, right? So we get many angry invitations every single day. And as Christians, we have to learn to say no to these invitations every day. And I think from here on, as the world gets darker and things are happening and these resets are happening, everything that we knew as normal is changing. There's a lot of things we cannot control. But one thing is we, we've got to guard ourselves. 
we've got to watch the words that come out of our mouth and the thoughts that we think have God help us. And we, we get many angry invitations every day just driving down the road, seeing how people drive. Uh, people can just go off. And I'm always amazed at people that blow, you know, just blow up. They can't hear you. So why are you losing your peace over somebody that really doesn't care? And the person that you love is sitting next to you. You know what I'm saying? So an invitation to be angry is an open door or a reason to be mad. Every single day we have a reason to be mad. Uh, the news, the lies, all the different things that are going on. Now is it monkeypox? I mean, there's just one thing after another that's being told to us. And so we are basically, we have to deal with ourselves. Anger is a signal to let you know there's a problem. The red light goes on, your car, there's a problem. That doesn't mean it's a solution. Not every problem needs the same solution. Throwing anger at something and being mad doesn't help. In many things, in many situations, anger makes things worse. An angry man accepts all invitations to get mad. And we, when something goes off in us, I can remember some of the maddest times I ever were were at coaches at, for my boys when they were in basketball. And my one son, and they never complained much because they were, you know, tough boys. But I remember in eighth grade, my oldest son said, I don't think I can take this coach much longer. And I didn't realize how abusive he was. And then that day he went off on those kids. And because my son kind of let me know he'd had it, he was at the end, because before I'd try to rescue him, and he's like, stay out of it, mom. You know, where the <laughs> but that day, I, I tell you, I was in the bleachers, and I was in his face in the middle of a game. I don't know, how, it's just like I had had enough. And you know what, that guy never, ever attacked our kids again after that. But I, I've never been so angry, and I didn't even think, it was just like, <laughs> That's it, you're not gonna, mama bear, you're not gonna attack my cubs anymore. And moms know what that is like, or dads do too. I saw a dad once uh, um, confront a girl that was basically attacking his son. And he just stood up and just, that's enough. You know, and so when you attack your kids, there's something that rises up you, that parental thing. But that's not something that should happen every day. That's not something, that's not a normal response that we, we go through, you know what I'm saying? You're never more vulnerable to evil than when you're angry. You say things, you do things, you, you pout. Uh, common sense works better at low temperatures. Angry people, I said, come from angry families. It's a habit. You've learned how to respond, and now you have to learn to not respond that way. And many times, it's, it's relearning. It's like, okay, my dad always yelled, I'm going to yell. Now, no, you're not going to yell. That's not the way to solve a problem. Yelling solves nothing, but it makes people afraid of you. It makes people feel in control and powerful. That's why they do it. That's one emotion they've learned, and they're going to do it. No one's going to mess with me. Uh, but in the Bible, a bad temper is a sign of weakness, and it's a sign of immaturity. A strength is to be gentle. A strength in the Bible is to be kind, like we just read. A reaction carried over from childhood to bulldoze through normal conflicts or disagreements where understanding, listening, cooperation, and sometimes compromise would be enough to solve the problem. So a bad temper is not a good thing. The Bible says don't even hang around a guy that's always angry, right? Lest you learn his ways. So there's two ways not to handle things. And we've talked about this before. One is the, the clam ups. The clam ups are the ones that suppress all their emotions. And when they get angry, they withdraw. And usually they withdraw unhealthily into self pity. They sulk and pout. What's wrong? Nothing. And they give you the silent treatment. They complain about people behind their backs, but they refuse honest communication. You can't solve a problem if someone's going to come to you about someone else. You can't fix that. You have to go, what does the Bible say? Go to the person. So honest communication. 
And honest communication has to be when you're not mad anymore. You have to go in a calm spirit. You have to go wanting peace. You have to go in the spirit, walk in the spirit. The Bible says walk in the spirit. Uh, because people that are clam, up, clam ups, they nurse their offenses. These are the crock pot people. They get upset and then they're always steaming. And they're angry, but you don't know they're angry. They're crock pots and they simmer all the time. <laughs> and so you don't know, these, these kind of people, to me, I've had a, a, a friend like this, you never know they're upset. But when they're done, they're done. They don't ever tell you the truth along the way. They just simmer, they're angry, they, but they suppress their anger. And you don't even know they're upset about anything because they're lying. Yes. So clam ups have a problem with lying. And the Bible says put away lying. Mm -hmm. Honest communication. Then we've got the blow ups. Just because a, clam, a, a person that's a clam up doesn't mean they're not angry. They think if they don't talk that it'll prove that they're not angry, but they're still angry. It's a variation of anger. Then we have the blow-ups. They ride out the surf. They're upset and everyone's going to know it. They don't care who knows it. They explode. They rant. They rave. They're blunt and forceful. And most of the time they're two-faced too because a lot of times people don't know what's wrong. Go to the person and let them know so you can work it out. And blow-ups always give you un unwanted advice. They tell you stuff you don't even ask for. <laughs> now, Proverbs 12, 16 says, A fool's wrath is quickly and openly known. No surprise here. We all see you have no control. James 1, 19 says, now this is our goal. Especially in these days we can't control. It's an angrier world we live in. This reset of everything we know, everything's going digital. Uh, all these forums are right over this even weekend. They're going to vote over worldwide health concerns and how they're going to control. This is huge, what's happening this week. Uh, it says, slow to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath or anger. It means to hesitate. When you feel that red light, when you feel something going off, hesitate. Stop, think, check yourself, watch your words. I had to learn this being in ministry so long. I just couldn't tell people what I thought. I had to learn to be slow to anger. And then sometimes I was too slow because I, I just kind of let people run all over me. I'm learning not to do that anymore. But anger is a state of emotional agitation. It's like a wash machine. People do things and you just feel agitated. It's caused by insults. If people insult you, nobody likes to be insulted. Uh, put downs, threats, injustice, just things that upset us. And today, things are upsetting us. To me, one of the things that upsets me is, I don't know when I started seeing things more clearly. Maybe it was 2017, was it, Mark? We're, we're getting rid of all my old YouTubes from back in the day where I keep quoting these word of faith preachers. And I keep thinking, oh, good, we got them. We got them, and I'm like, well, here's more, here's more. I was like, Lord, have mercy, did I have a brain? So we have to forgive ourselves for our journey. Yeah. It's like, why didn't I get to where I am faster? Why did it take me so long to come through these prophetic uh, word of faith movements to find out the deception in it? Well, we are where we are, yeah. so we have to forgive ourselves. But that agitates me sometimes. It's just like, oh, I can't. I'll look at some of my old notes from back in the day, and I was like, I really was sincere. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 23, an angry man stirs up strife. Somebody comes over, they're angry and they're upset with you. What do they do? They just stir up that division. And we're gonna see a lot of this. We're gonna see a lot of angry people. We're gonna see a lot of strife. We're gonna see a lot of division. What's it gonna do to you? You have to have peace. And sometimes you might be the only peace that arrives at, on a situation. You have to be peace. You have to remain your calm. It's like someone that shows up at a car accident, you know, the first responders. They're trained how to respond. They had to learn it. It didn't come natural. They had to train how to respond. Well, we'd have to do the same thing now in the Lord. We have to train ourselves how to respond to an angrier world, angrier people. Uh, as time goes on, maybe hungrier 
people, right? So an angry man, he stirs up strife or division, and a furious man abounds in transgression. He abounds in sin. So when we go before God, he's going to say, okay, we're accountable for the words of our mouth. Words are important. So we have to start checking ourselves now to not let these words that are corrupt, that are full of malice, come out of our mouth to destroy somebody, right? Some people have no self-control. Now in Proverbs, don't let that be you. Proverbs 14, 29, he that is slow to wrath. God is slow to anger. If we were God, we'd probably wipe this whole thing out a long time ago. <laughs> He's slow, he, he's hesitant to wrath, but he that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. So if we're just gonna blow up and be upset or suppress and never talk and never be honest, uh, we're gonna lose relationships because you're not honest. Understand what makes you angry. When I was having my kids in high school, I knew what made me angry. Those coaches made me angry, but there's a lot of times I couldn't talk to them because my kids weren't ready. But when my son let me have it, let it I can't take this guy anymore. And he was known to be an abuser. Uh, Bobby Knight Jr., they used to call him. Uh, really abusive behavior. But the kids loved basketball. They'd, go th they'd sit through anything, you know, broken chairs and all this stuff. But understand what makes you angry, and then we have to make the right choices when it appears. We're going to feel anger. Anger is something that God's given us that something is wrong. But you can't live in that state of anger. It's not healthy. It's not good for you. It's going to uh, cause you an early grave. People that are angry don't have um, a lot of friends because they don't know how to listen. They don't know how to cooperate, and they don't know how to fix things. Now remember, anger is a signal. It's not a license to lose control. Angry people have Velcro minds. Everything sticks. They don't know how to forgive or let things go. If The Bible says if we're going to be um, Christians, we have to stand praying forgive as God's forgiven us. So we have to, we want forgiveness, so we've got to forgive other people. It doesn't mean you open up the door for bad things. You forgive them. You let it go. It doesn't mean you trust them again. Right. It means you're guarded now. Right. But you have to let things drop. Otherwise, your whole mind and your whole being, you're going to be agitated and upset. And as this world gets angrier, you're going to get as angry right along with them. Yeah. So angry people have Velcro minds. Everything sticks. They're too touchy. They get offended easily. And they hold grudges. And we all have to remember, conflict is a way of life. Even people that are <laughs> friends or whatever, you're not going to agree on everything. And that's okay. You can't expect everybody to believe everything you do or do everything your way or whatever. So you got to give people grace, right? Conflict is a part of life. How upset, agitated, and irritated do you want to be? How do you want to live your life, especially in these end times, with all of the conflict that's coming, all the fear, all the fear porn, all of the deception? We have to make a choice that we're going to stay in peace, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that even means not losing our top. <laughs> By responding incorrectly, we hurt ourselves. You hurt yourself by being upset and not listening to the other side of the story. Have you ever gotten mad at someone because somebody else was upset? And then you find out there's another whole side to that story. Well, the Bible says you don't just run to, and take a dog by its ears. You're going to get bit. So what do you have to do? You have to listen to both sides of the story. So by losing control, it makes things worse. And we hurt ourselves. Ready for just a little more? Colossians 3.8, it says, put off, put, what are we supposed to put off? Anger, wrath, malice, filthy communication out of your mouth. Now, 
I don't know how some people can eat their food after they talk so dirty. <laughs> it's filthy communication out of your mouth. Uh, variations of anger, unforgiveness. If you haven't forgiven somebody, you're angry. You're still angry. And I'm not saying this is easy. Some friends that I had over a year ago did some pretty mean, rotten things. A death of a relationship to a lot of us and didn't do it right. And, didn't have, and I have to fight that. I have to fight it. I have to th say, Lord, I forgive them. But it doesn't mean it didn't hurt. And it doesn't mean that I'm, 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 up, I'm, you know, I'm not angry about it. It's just that I have to keep letting it go. Very few things in my life have I had that have bothered me as this last year has with the way certain people, not my family or my, but some Christian people have acted so, to me, so demonic and so not honest that you thought were your friends. So I have to keep forgiving. And it's a challenge. I got to keep doing it. So do you. Refusing to let go of an injury. We got to keep doing it. Doesn't, he didn't say, it's, this is going to be really easy now some of the hardest things you have to do. Yep. It's, it's a hard thing. When you want justice and you want your side of the story to be told yep. and you just have to let it go. Say, Lord, it's yours. And we're all facing situations like that. Sarcasm. Uh, we had a guy that was so sarcastic and mean and always, poof, poof, poof. he was angry. Sarcasm is, an, is a spirit of anger. You're designed to cut, it causes pain. That, if you're sarcastic to people and you always cut, you have an anger spirit there. Gossip, jealousy, bitterness, revenge, all these are variations of anger. So we're always dealing with ourselves. <laughs> this is a full-time job to take care of me. How about you? <laughs> Feelings will come and go, but we're responsible for our words and our behavior before the Lord. We learn bad responses. We learn how to respond in, in angry families. They're practiced and they become habits. We have to break habits of families. Bad manners, bad uh, language, bad habits. And then if you get triggered, what triggers you to be angry? What sets you off? Recognize what makes you upset, agitated. Then you have to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, help me with this agitation. How am I supposed to respond? Am I supposed to say something or am I not supposed to say thing, something? Do I just work this out with you? or is it a t And I like to work it out with the Lord, but there comes a time sometimes you have to say things. And usually as a leader of whatever sort, when you have to say something to confront someone, they're going to be mad. You could lose a friendship. And that's why sometimes I wait I don't want to confront, but there comes a time sometimes you have to. You have to. Or you're not a, a good mom, a good dad, whatever, good grandma. So we have to practice a new response to those triggers. An example of this is the blow-ups. When they blow up, your response is to stop talking. You have to learn to zip it up. Now the clam-ups, you have to learn to talk. So you both have to break, or we all have to break, these habits, and we probably have a little bit of both sides. I mean, who knows? We're all kind of a combination of things. So what's the goal here? Be slow to anger, listen, slow. Tell people what you need. Tell people what you need. That's been a hard thing for me to do, is tell people I need you to help me. And I've kind of been a survivor on my own without a mom as a teenager. I've always had to do everything by myself. Sometimes it's refreshing to say, I need something. Can you help me do this? Tell people what you need without guilting them, without controlling or being pushy. Blow-ups, if you're a blow-up, you've got to learn, and this is not easy, you've got to learn to not wrongly vent. Because you can't vent on someone just because they're there. That's like littering garbage. And it's... Some people have never learned that. They've never been trained because they haven't read the Bible and they haven't had preachers that have told them. Don't wrongly vent. Determine to stay calm. And sometimes it's a matter of not raising your voice. Some people don't realize how loud they are. 
when they get angry, they just <laughs> calm down. Your tone is very important. And then clam ups. Stop lying. You are bothered. You are upset. That did hurt your feeling. That did cross your boundary. You did hurt me. Speak up when someone crosses your boundary because clam ups think it's wrong to ever be angry. But then they end up suffering by holding it in and it's going to come out sideways anyways. So anger is a signal. So when you get triggered, you say, okay, this is a signal. How am I supposed to respond? Because you have to live with you. Nobody else lives with you. You have, I mean, inside your body, you are you. So you have to, when something's upsetting you, you have to pause and you think, how can I stay calm? How can I say this correctly without getting other people more mad or just spreading my anger or else just going silent, not talking? And what's wrong with you? Nothing, nothing. And then you don't talk to them for two weeks. That's anger and you're deceiving yourself thinking that you're not angry. So anger is normal. It needs to be understood, kept under control, and managed. Angry people are like terrorists. We're going to see more and more angry people. They're just going around shooting people. They're just killing people, drive-by shootings. I was just reading it in the paper. They try and control others with fear. They rant and they rave to get their way like children. They've never learned you're not supposed to take these you know, this anger out on other people. So if this is all of us, <laughs> what do we need to do? We need to repent. Repent is a good word. It means we can change. Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Sometimes a soft answer is all you need. Sometimes all you need is a hug. Sometimes you just need someone to come and put their arm around you. I understand whatever the situation might be, but we have to ask the Lord to help us because a soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous word, it stirs up anger. So are you stirring up anger or are you trying to put it out? So let's pray. Father, we thank you that... We're alive in these days and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we know we're living in an angrier world. We're living in a confused world. People are deceived. They don't know who to believe. They don't know how, who to trust. Uh, politics have, uh, and religion have just seemed to not be the answer. They've, they've come up short in so many ways. But they didn't save us. You did. So, Father, we... We look to you to help us with our responses, with our behaviors, as these end times get angrier and people are so upset and just hardly nothing just sets them off. We pray for ourselves, Lord, that you would help us be slow to anger, that we would be slow to speak and be slow. We'd listen, we'd listen. Our goal is to walk with you and not to grieve the Holy Spirit in these end times. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us and you'll never leave us or forsake us. And we can do all things as we lean on you. Help us not live in the flesh, but live in the Spirit in these end times. And everyone said? If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her and be sure to check out her YouTube playlist for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org website page and click on the messages button on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported on the main web page at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time.